This video corresponds with lesson three of unit 4b, which teaches you how to complete the square. This is something you learned back in unit 4a. The only difference here is that we're going to be dealing with some imaginary numbers. You'll see that this process is exactly the same as what you've already learned. But again, imaginary numbers will pop up, so we'll just have to deal with those as we solve these problems. So the goal in these problems that we're going to do here is try to find what x is. So we're going to use this completing the square process to do so. So let's take a look at the first example here. x squared plus 10x plus 29 equals 0. In order to complete the square, first thing you have to do, variables have to be on one side, the constant has to be on the other. First thing I'm going to do is subtract 29, and I'm going to have x squared plus 10x equals negative 29. The second step is to look at that b value and do two things with it. We're going to cut it in half, then square it. So you can show this off to the side or simply do this in your head. You take the 10, cut it in half, it's 5. Take 5 and square it, you get 25. So the number I'm going to add to both sides will be a 25. From here, this is where you start shrinking the problem down. You factor, you solve, and work your way towards getting your solutions for x. Looking at the left side, you have x squared plus 10x plus 25. That's a trinomial way that factors apart, what multiplies to 25 and adds to 10, 5 and 5. So we wouldn't write, in this case, x plus 5 twice, as we've talked about before. Since it's x plus 5 twice, let's write it as x plus 5 squared. Then it equals, we add negative 29 plus 25, you get negative 4. From here, we need to start getting the x by itself. So we got to get rid of the squared. How do we do that? Take a square root. So squared and square root cancel, so I'm left with x plus 5 equals, remember when you square root both sides, when you're solving an equation, we have to put in a plus minus because we have two roots. Now, if I take a look at square root of negative four, you've learned in this chapter, if you're taking the square root of a negative number, you have to do two things. First thing is the negative comes out front as an I because it's an imaginary number. Then we take a look at, all right, what's the square root of four? Well, this comes out nice, it's two. So I can convert the square root of negative four to plus or minus 2i. Your final step, subtract 5 from each side. You end up with negative 5 plus or minus 2i. That won't combine any further because you have a real component, an imaginary component, that's your complex number, and that's your final solution. If you look at the second example, it's pretty much the same thing, but there's one little difference in it that we also covered back in the last chapter. If you happen to have a number in front of the x squared that isn't a 1, we have to get rid of it so that you can complete the square properly. So the fact that there's a 2 out in front of the problem means I'm going to take everything in this problem, divide it by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce this down to x squared minus 14x plus 70 equals 0. So everything gets divided by 2 because I need just a regular x squared. Now. Once you do this, same exact process. So from here, I can make sure my variables are on the left, my variable terms, my regular number, my constants on the right. So I'm going to have x squared minus 14x equals negative 70. Now I take a look at the b term, which is negative 14. Cut it in half, makes it negative 7. Square it, becomes positive 49. I'm going to add that 49 to each side of the problem. Again, my next step, take a look at the left side. It's a trinomial that will factor apart. Multiplies to 49, adds to negative 14. Negative 7, negative 7. So my factoring would be x minus 7 squared, because I'd have the same factor twice. Equals, add that up on the right side, and you get negative 21. We go ahead now and take the square root of each side. So that leaves me with x minus 7 on the left. Equals plus or minus. Let's take a look at square root of negative 21. Again, if it's a square root of a negative number, the first thing I can do is pull the i out, and that'll take away the negative part. If I look at square root of 21, the only way that breaks down is to the square root of 3 and square root of 7. That doesn't get us anywhere, so I'm just going to leave it as square root of 21. So square root of negative 21 is the exact same thing as i square root 21. Final step, add 7 to each side. You get x equals 7 plus or minus i square root 21. Again, you have, that's a complex number with a real component, an imaginary component. 
So there's nothing more I can do there. That's my solution. So once again, it's the same process you learned back in the last chapter, how to complete the square when you were dealing with positive square roots. This case here, the only difference is your square rooting numbers that end up becoming imaginary. It's still the exact same process. So that's how you once again complete the square, but this time with solutions that are imaginary and complex.